to tonight's Board of Education meeting. The date is Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. And I appreciate if you turn off your cell phones as this meeting is being recorded. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Here. Mr. Healy? Ms. McCurdy? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chair Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. All present. Okay. Just curious, we don't have a high school representative yet. Election tomorrow. Okay, okay. All right, would the board please stand and we'll lead everyone in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and Ms. Dremmett, we don't have any staff recognition tonight? Or? No staff student recognition yet. Uh, next meeting, we definitely will. Okay, great. Um, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for um, our Board of Ed meeting on August 27, 2019. Are there any corrections? Yes, Madam Chair. Yep. Uh, just a correction for the finance minutes from last week. So I can have some notes that I can get to Ellen to be included. Okay. And also, uh, and next week's packet will be the previous week's finance um, minutes that'll, that will have the full Okay, minutes. thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other corrections? All right, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Those minutes are approved. So noted. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that in public comment, we limit it to five minutes. <coughs> okay. All right. And we have no action items this evening. Just wait to student program and services. That'll change. <laughs> okay. Mr. Emmett, you have communications to share? I do. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Granato. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this, in terms of agenda-wise, is probably the last light one we have. Um, we will have our data presentation as SBAC scores just came out uh, yesterday publicly. Uh, coupled with our SAT scores, um, we will be doing our data presentation on the 24th. And then our um, strategic plan uh, committee also needs to convene, and we need mm -hmm. to uh, come forward with a quarterly update on the strategic plan as well. So look for that on the 24th as well. Um, the Board of Education student rep election is slated for tomorrow uh, during advisory at the high school. It's expected that our new rep will be with us for the September 24th meeting. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about parking around the high school. A reminder to students, parents, and residents to be mindful of parking restrictions around the high school. Uh, for example, there is no parking on Eagle Drive. Uh, this is enforced by the Wethersfield Police Department and was enforced during open house. So please heed the signs, very important. Uh, also, uh, students and residents uh, are discouraged from parking on Church Street or West Way near the gates uh, and hopping the fence to access the fields. Uh, the same information was relayed to our student athletes and parents at last night's sports meeting. We're certainly very proud of our athletic facilities and we ask our visitors to continue to he adhere to expectations when visiting. These expectations include no animals on the premises with the exception of documented service animals. Uh, board policy 1500 clearly states that no smoking or vaping on any school grounds, including parking lots, in your car, in parking lots, on the fields, near the fields, in the schools or around the schools. No smoking or vaping on school property. Possession or consumption of alcoholic beverages is prohibited, and visitors are not permitted to climb on buildings, uh, fences, or structures. And our visitors to athletic facilities are asked to properly dispose of trash and keep the playing field free of debris. Went down and looked at the softball field last week and found uh, empty sports drink containers, a deodorant stick, uh, various chunks of athletic tape, uh, equipment, lots of things left there. So let's make sure that we keep our fields as neat and clean as possible. 
Please understand also that access to the fields is granted under the direction of the Wethersfield Athletic Department or the Town of Wethersfield. An enforcement action will be taken against those who access the fields without proper permission. We thank you for assisting us in maintaining our athletic facilities that the community can be proud of. The uh, 18th annual Keene Winton Bittner Soccer Jamboree was held this past Saturday at the high school. The weather was absolutely perfect for that event. Teams from Wethersfield, Kingswood, Oxford, Staples of Westport, Tallinn, Newington, Northwest Catholic, and Plainville came together to remember those we lost on 9-11 and to play some friendly soccer. There are many who make this great event possible, and the district is fortunate to have the support of Assistant Principal Athletic Director Mike Maltesi in ensuring that our community supporters have everything they need to make that day a success. I wanted to provide a little bit of an update on the implementation of the cell phone policy. Uh, the feedback from both the middle school and the high school has been positive thus far. At Silas Dean, students are instructed to keep cell phones in their lockers during the school day, so we've seen no uh, impact on instructional time. At the high school level, the department liaisons report to Mr. Moore that there is consistent compliance at this point in time with the request to turn off and stow devices during instructional time. Mr. Moore also reports that some teachers have tried pocket charts, which have allowed students to stow phones during instructional time and retrieve them on their way out at the conclusion of the class. Uh, we're also working on fine-tuning the transportation. Mr. Kazak, who's with us this evening, has been busy uh, riding buses, checking on routes, and responding to uh, parent questions and concerns. Uh, principals have reported that the open choice busing has been a concern with regard to late drop-offs on both morning and afternoon runs. We've had an extensive conversation with uh, open choice director Deb Barrero on uh, increasing the efficiency of those routes and making sure that all of our students get to school uh, on time. So uh, with that, uh, that's communications this evening. Thank you. Great. Any questions from Mr. Emmett? You, okay. Would you like to give us an update on how the enrollment is going and the various class sizes are happening? Yes, in terms of our elementary class sizes, we are um, very stable. We're at about 1,758 students as of Friday. We collected daily physical attendance through last Friday. Um, we don't find any classes that at this point in time are excessive. I think 25 and 25 in sixth grade at Highcrest is the largest that we have. We have seen an increase at both the middle school and the high school with the numbers. Um, and we're looking at that. I've actually talked with Suzanne Curtin today to talk about where the kids have come from. So for example, uh, compared to June 17th of 2019 and last week, we had 33 additional seventh graders. So we're interested to know yeah. where, where they've come from. Have they come from magnets? Are they coming from Corpus Christi? Are they moving from other you know, parts of the uh, country or the world? At the high school, the last count we had, um, we saw an increase of 40 students according to Power School. And those were really spread out from ninth right through um, grade 12. Uh, we continue to see um, some changes. We have some students that are registered here in Wethersfield that we know are not living in Wethersfield. So we have one family that's getting a letter, um, a 10-day letter. So that's what Mike Goddard, our part-time residency officer, does. We are um, really strict on that. If you live here in Wethersfield and your head hits the pillow here, we welcome you as a student. If you are not, uh, then you need to get your education in the town in which you live. So. Uh, that's where we're at, and we'll continue to monitor that. Um, obviously, with uh, October 1st, with the PAS reporting, we'll be monitoring through the rest of the month, John. And how did we do as far as placement of the paras that were in concern or discussion last year? In terms of paras? Yeah. Right now, at this point in time, we've still got some para positions we have to fill. There continues to be some attrition, uh, paras that have left the district. So it's something that Mr. Kazar, as he shakes his head in the back, <laughs> is continuing to work on um, to make sure that we're fully uh, subscribed with our para um, support for right. kids. And then the other uh, you brought to our attention regarding the uh, physical education component at the Silas Steen Middle School and the class sizes there. How is that working out? It's class sizes remain large for two sections uh, at this point in time. So what uh, Ms. Bannon and Ms. Fries have worked to do is to float in some paraprofessional support. So there's an additional adult in there during those two sections. But again, this is the reality of we had to make that reduction. So we took the third gym teacher, the third phys ed teacher, moved that position over to the high school Correct. to cover the retirement of uh, John Campanella. So we are keeping an eye on that sure right are. now with mm -hmm. regards because when they're not going outside or when they're outside they're inside they're in the locker room there's a lot of 
bodies uh, running around. Yes. So we have to really be cautious regarding that. So, okay, thanks. So when you say um, there's a lot, what's the number? What are we saying? Well, you have double classes. Yeah, you're looking at probably about 75 to 80 85 students. Kids. Okay. So you're looking at classes of about 40 with two gym teachers. We'd still have two. We used to have three. We're down to two. And then you've got boys and girls. So uh, the instructors need to be in the locker room to make sure that there's nothing going on there, but they need someone in the gymnasium as well. Okay. Because there's no one watching them in the gymnasium. Thank you. Any other questions? It's odd that we got class sizes in the high, uh, high school and middle school and en enrollment increases, especially nine seniors. Yeah, we had nine. As of Unusual. the last power school run, we had nine new seniors wow. uh, coming in that had registered. Okay. All right, we'll go on to Board of Ed meetings held. John, can I ask you to talk about our facilities and maintenance committee Absolutely. meeting? Absolutely. Uh, we, as a committee, met on Wednesday, September 4th at the Stillman Building. Uh, in attendance, board members Kelly, Elaine, Chris, John Morse, myself, and Bobby. Uh, Administrator uh, Mike Emmett and uh, Sally Katz, representing the town uh, physical services. Um, we discussed the shared services issue from facilities and maintenance component and uh, an update was given regarding the grounds, the uh, tree cutting, the mowing, the cleanliness of the buildings, the uh, overall maintenance, uh, it's working. It's a real good fit. Uh, the communication is uh, in dialogue between the town and the board is continual. And um, you know, like everything else, there's always a need for additional uh, hands to help out, but I think in all, the opening of school, a couple of rough edges with regarding to the maintenance, but I think it was uh, about 99% uh, rolled out in a, a good shape. Um, a high crest portable uh, classroom uh, replacement update. Uh, the bids went out, they came out into high. They are going out uh, mid-October? No, mid Fe February. Uh, I'm sorry. Said. Yeah, uh, the heat goes on in mid-October. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> the heat goes on in mid-October. Okay. Um, so right now we're waiting to go out again for bid. Um, and a lot of questions came up regarding why can't we just take them down? Uh, I think it's got to be a whole package. The buildings have to remain there until new ones are put in place. So the company to replace them, is going to be uh, monumental as far as you know the carefulness and uh, then the new one puts gets put in so rather than get rid of them put them in on and on and on and at this point uh, they're safe um, and they're continually being monitored they're empty they're empty yeah. they are they're not being used so. of animals <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, we also discussed the phase two update uh, which is regarding the uh, whole concern uh, with our elementary uh, schools and the, the projects of each school and the renovation. Um, we, are, uh, we met, we discussed uh, the idea of what, what the next steps are. Um, and at this moment, we are, uh, uh, you know, looking at a few plans. The board will receive uh, an overview of what we're looking at at this point. Uh, we looked at uh, several ideas, uh, approximately, I believe, seven of them, mm -hmm. and we figured out which would be the best uh, for the community. We as a group, workforce group, and we shared with the facilities committee, uh, felt that we needed to narrow it down, narrow the scope down. So at the present, at our workforce meeting, which is uh, in two weeks, uh, we will come together and look at the different scenarios that the uh, uh, Collier uh, is going to put together for us, as well as based on the uh, study for attendance, 
And we want to make sure it's one and done. And we want to be transparent. And then we'll start getting the parents involved to the next step, to the next phase of what we're doing. So timing is everything. Um, we all also discuss at that point the need to how we go out to uh, the voters. And we'll be discussing that at future meetings at this point. So we're trying to get the whole thing um, to go. Anyone else that was there wants to chime in? Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of details to this, Not first the population study, and then a facility study, and then what can we do with these buildings, and could we build new, and can we renovate? So everything has been looked at, everything. Um, it has been a little slow at times, but it is methodical. Um, and we will be bringing the best plans we possibly can to the board, and then um, seeing how we go forward. And I think the other thing with regard to doing the due diligence and doing the enrollment study and looking at the facility study here is that uh, in this um, day and age of the debt diet and not seeing bonding, you know, being approved by the state at the rate that it once was, we want to make sure that we approach the state with a plan that is logical, that makes sense, that maximizes our reimbursement rate, and that will meet approval. Um, the other piece we know also is that uh, we know what the mill rate is. We're aware of that. And, you know, one of our scenarios does take us from five schools to four. So we're looking to try and increase efficiency. Also looking at it from a perspective of design for safety and security. Mm -hmm. And we look at our buildings. I think our most recent building was, was constructed back in 1973 or thereabouts. So, you know, we have buildings that are of, they're, they're tired. So um, I think the idea of doing the due diligence here, looking at our long-range enrollment, making sure that our enrollment is going to be stable. Again, that was one of the things they found was Weathersfield was one of the most stable communities that they had ever studied. So you know, we know that we're going to continue to have the enrollment, and uh, you know, we know we need to make an investment for the long-term growth and health of this town, for the economic development. Um, a strong school system is very important. Thank you. And the other thing in our, our plan is that we're also looking at preschool in every building. Mm -hmm. And special ed. in every building. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something for every school, whether it's renovate, renovate is new, or new construction. So we're looking at a variety of scenarios uh, that would be, you know, vetted out there for everyone. So it's, it's, uh, it is a, a detailed project. Uh, and hopefully we can get going on it. And if you work backwards, we also have to look at uh, the specs and what we have to do to apply to the state. So that's an, at our next meeting, we're gonna look at that calendar of uh, mm -hmm. movement. The other thing that came out of this meeting was the uh, parts were ordered for the generator at the Weathersfield High School. That's our, another uh, um, project that is happening. Unfortunately, that generator was not under warranty and we've learned that it needs to be running for eight to 12 hours a week because it's a fuel injected uh, generator. So hopefully it'll be done by October. Yeah, I can actually uh, follow up on that. Uh, we had our um, central office team meeting yesterday. Uh, Ms. Katz attended and reported that the um, uh, generator has been repaired at this point in time. So they are going to test it and this time around they will notify our IT department so that they can be ready when the network goes down. And uh, they'll test the generator and then once the generator tests out, they will remove the temporary one that is sitting out in the parking lot. And um, as Mr. Cassio had mentioned, the town needs to run that generator on a pretty regular schedule so that the fuel ends up getting mixed up and we don't have the separation of the diesel, which they believe is what was the cause of the injectors um, failing. So we've talked already about the potential of that happening like on a Saturday night or a Sunday night where there's limited um, impact to any programs that are in the building. So um, that'll be um, ongoing. And the Silestein roof has been completed. Upon that, uh, they felt that more ladders were to be installed for safety issues, concerns. Um, and the superintendent mentioned about fence jumping, the trash, the parking, on Eagle Drive already. So that's gonna be monitored. I think uh, Kevin Hill's gonna be there at all the games. 
Um, uh, Emerson Williams and Webb Courtyards, Wethersfield High School are being reviewed and looked at and what we can do to make them look better. Um, so whether it's tree trimming and uh, you know just to clean it up and get it going or to eliminate them altogether. So, so there's a lot going on at the facilities. Uh, I think you know for what we can do and the money we have, I think we're in good shape. Right. So that's and my report. Yeah, and we're working with Sally, and it's all working yeah. out. Mm -hmm. It's a great. It's a great uh, shared services. Sally is uh, a, a, a great compliment. Anybody have a question for John? John, soon we will have a, a presentation here too on the project. Correct. On our new school project. Yeah, we're going to look at the at our workforce meeting in two weeks to mm -hmm. decide when we're going to present to the board. That should be good. Okay, we also had um, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, which is WEC, and Michael and I attended the first WEC meeting of the year on Monday. Um, WEC is Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, and their motto is that all Weathersfield children, birth to eight, are healthy, developmentally successful learners and connected to our community. Um, I'm going to sound like a commercial for Goodwin College, and I'm not meaning to, but Leslie Escablaze, the Director of Community Partnerships at Goodwin College, was our guest for that meeting. She spoke of the need for further education for the highly educated population coming into Connecticut who are underemployed. Goodwin College is, provides many career-focused programs SNAP employments and training programs, and if you are eligible, certain certification programs are free. So I hope people out there are listening. There is English as a Second Language certification program, manufacturing readiness programs, entrepreneurial network programs, a drop-in child care center for Goodwin College students. It's like they covered all the bases. And to help in the cost of these programs, there are Pell Grants and other grant fundings. And some programs, as I even mentioned, are even free if you qualify. So please check the WEC website for more information or contact Goodwin College. It was a most interesting meeting as we were talking about um, how our population is changing. Um, and as Leslie was saying, they are highly educated and underemployed, and this is the way to change that. Okay, um, meeting scheduled. We have policy and planning committee, <gasps> maybe on the 17th, right? I think it's not the 16th now. Yeah, we were unable to uh, achieve a quorum for Monday, so that meeting will be on Tuesday. The 17th. the 17th okay uh, and at that meeting we've got the latest from shipment and goodwin in terms of the model policy so we'll be digging into those great and those are the new state mandates correct, correct? Mm -hmm. okay um correct council i won't be here oh okay so that is on september 18th at 11 30. Finance and Information Management Committee will be before our next board meeting on um, September 24th at 6.15. Um, is there any unfinished business? I was going to mention the policies, but we brought them up, is that we have those to look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the policy that you received tonight is to go into your binder on the policies. That's our phone policy. Um, Public comment. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay, thank you. So are there any board comments? I'm going to make this sweet. I do. Well, I will mention one other meeting I went to. Um, we did have a smooth start to 2019-20 school year. Typical glitches happen, but um, it also means that all these other meetings start up. And so I did attend the Keen for Kids Coalition meeting, which is such a strong uh, collaboration of the Keen Foundation, the library, social and youth services, park and recreation, and the Board of Ed. The discussion was centered on the after-school programs as they get started. 
Caroline Ficino spoke to the board <clears throat> at our last meeting about their incredible success in the past. And Caroline continues to try and search for reasons why some children can't make it. So I so appreciate her work on that. This year, the Silas Dean Middle School After School Program will be funded by the Keene Foundation and will include intramurals, flag football, after school tutoring, and cooking and baking. And always a thank you for the Keene Foundation for all it does for our schools. Okay, and we don't have our high school representative yet, so we don't know what's going on at the high school. <laughs> All right, so if there are no more comments, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Objections? So this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming and for watching, and good night.